I was talking with someone recently about the question, how are we supposed to live in a modern society? I don't think there's one answer to this question, but it's a fruitful question. And of course, as in any context, everybody has to decide who they are for themselves and form a unique identity out of the elements available to them. How am I doing this? Right now, my internal world is sort of a mess going through some... Uh, I remember, uh, I always say for this, get back in your cocoon, you half-baked butterfly, which is from a Les Mis, Les Amis, text post from an old acquaintance on Tumblr. Get back in your cocoon, you half-baked butterfly. So it's very half-baked butterfly right now. My overall world is like, I don't want to say Christianity because, I mean, it's Christianity, but I also believe that, or see how all religions have the same core principle. So I will borrow stuff. I will, like, the, my center personally seems to still be Christianity, but that's like a me thing. I don't think it has any inherent worth over any other system. It's just, I'm attached. So my Christianity slash my overall universal metaphysical faith is kind of sputtering. It goes back and forth. So, I'm like, yeah, and just a lot of transition periods in life in general at the same time. Some days, I wonder, should I really pray that I want the fastest way? Should I, is this truly a wise request for, for the universe? Of course it is, though. I don't regret anything. However, so I'm like reading this book by David Bentley Hart on nature and supernature. It's very good, but half of it I'm like cold to. So I'm like translating his terms into terms that actually apply to my personal, where my heart is and trying to understand it that way. And then I'm like getting random scraps of Pinterest and like fandom content and random memes and thinking about the flat amoral structure of reality things and staring longingly at this engraving of Jesus which is on my wall it's him walking through the crowd on his way to be crucified it's a good picture and like reading over my old diaries when my Faith was more, it was, it was easier or smaller in a way, but also because there were those more clear channels, it was just, it was just easier. And therefore I direct many longing glances at said picture. And listening to like the Ross Boutin the Spotify angels have presented to me and um, shall live in rent free in the brain and the like Harry Potter in 99 seconds and the Lord of the Rings in 99 seconds song and all of these coexist so And all these elements have my heart in a way. So, I have just decided this is not a bug, it's a feature. This is just the way that I should live in the world. I do think. The beautiful thing about a 
living a gestalt, any gestalt, but especially a living being when you get to that level of complexity, is that what it is really doing is synthesizing and embracing contradiction and juxtaposition. I mean, Jesus is a very clear archetypal case of that, as he takes the very highest and in the worldview in which humans are hopeless sinners, the very lowest, and just like, or really, he takes the lowest, because he takes the lowest of like evil, and he synthesizes all of those, and somehow manages to live, move, walk around, have his being, and join those, and because he exists, or because this figure of Christ and Jesus exists, those two contradictions are now joined, and it's a beautiful thing about being a living creature. Therefore, I want to embrace the widest possible span of contradictions simultaneously. Every time I say the word simultaneously, I think of mm, simultaneously. Which was from when I would frequent the now dead and mourned site, chatwithyourself.com, where you could chat with yourself like in just a single chat room, but other people could watch you, what you were saying to yourself, but they couldn't participate. It was really good for creativity and coming up with ideas somehow, having an audience but being alone. And But of course, humans being humans, we figured out a way to chat across the chats. And there were people that would hack into somebody's chat and they would be called chads. I think they were, that was the name for them. And anyway, one of these people would say mm, simultaneously. But I want to embrace the widest possible span of contradictions. And this includes the I, I recognize the good in the ancient world that is really fallen apart these days and is really lost and I draw on trying to revive of dead traditions and tradition that has just been forgotten and like the saints and Orthodox Christianity which has very deep roots and which leads to a sort of scorn for anything that's modern right because it's like mm, it's all degenerate by now but I live in in the, the 21st century, and have also, and recognize the good that is in our age, and I have, like, so much tenderness for Gen Z, basically, I guess, my, I'm like an old Gen Z, my generation, and my time, and What is pure and good in that, in our immediate? Almost more so because it is so surrounded by chaos. Like, I was looking at Pinterest. I look, I, I'm on Pinterest, but it's like screenshots of Tumblr. But there was just this, this person who bought a little glass snail a snail with a little glass orb-shaped shell, and then they were like, I just, I saw this from some brand, and I needed it, so I bought it. And they were all like, the snorm. And then they made an edit of that one orb contemplation meme, and they were like, contemplate the snorb. Everybody was thinking the same thing, and they're like, glad to see we're all on the same wavelength today. The snorb. The snorb is a pure and good part of modernity. Like climbing gyms, there's another one. Or the genuine love and the genuine tolerance and wider acceptance of people who are different. I shouldn't say wider because, as far as I understand, in other cultures and in other times, it was of course framed differently and put in different terms, but there were places for people who are now considered like marginalized. So anyway, 
it also exists now and touches my heart and it's a like that's it's a good thing so i like to throw all of that together into myself and not like use all the tradition and the ancient worldview and terms and metaphysics not to erase the changes but to reconnect them with their source and like revivify them almost opening up our terms and our world and our media and environment to the full meaning of those terms like the, we have almost the tip of the iceberg but like giving it the rest of the iceberg without destroying the memes and the technology and the like identity of modernity in the positive sense I feel that I've developed and of course continue to develop I have a decently solid sense and like discernment for what is good and like light and like attractive secondarily what is part of me personally so like the things that that are good that I value that have value that are like pure and good or as Kalrovitz says and if I'm a pattern an instance of my pattern so I I've developed a good discernment of that. Like I know when something is, you can think of it as a little, a little bit of light in something. And so now I, tr I want to save. All of the like random pop songs that I heard marginal in the in the background as a kid, I have nostalgia for them. Therefore, collect them all, listen to them, then end up quoting them at moments that I'm very caffeinated right now. Anyhow, trying to save all of the light and not use one truth to destroy another thing that's good, but connect everything that sort of resonates with me in this way or that where I see light that is good into some kind of hopeful and coherent <laughs> worldview that saves the positives of everything that is available to me, of course. This is, a, what I'm doing is developing my own worldview and my own identity, so necessarily it's an idiosyncratic process. But just, yeah, being open to not letting any of my, no, 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 no. Well, yeah. Being as open as I can to all of the light and discerning and collecting it all from whatever source and whatever context and that should all fit together and I shouldn't have to by clinging on to one thing that is good th then cover up being able to see something else it should all fit it should fit because it should be part of the same the same picture I came up with other overall life purposes and goals one night a while ago. They're tangentially related, which was, well, two of them were, to, because what you want to do, like, or what we do as a prequel, we live out and embody our values even more than, like, part of it is what I produce and, like, my art and communication and 
these videos and my writing, etc. But most of it, the central part of it that holds all that together is just my daily actions and life and relationships. So anyway, with the totality um, de mi ser, of my life and being, to demonstrate that love and life are the same thing. That's a, that's a quote from the New West Side Story. But... I always wonder, when does a quote, when does something that I've borrowed become enough of a part of me that I no longer um, should, like, break the flow by citing the source? I, I will take things from anywhere and everywhere and work them in. And then also to demonstrate and prove that you don't have to sell yourself to make a living, like, to live in the world. And I guess that has to do with how to live in modernity because it's society is such that oftentimes people are obligated to sell themselves and feel like that's just the way that it has to be. Um, like to dehumanize yourself in some way in order to fit in and in order to be able to continue to exist in this context. But in short, find the light, oh yeah, find the light and feed it. Find the light and absorb it into myself. Um, find the light and feed it is from The Ethics of Beauty. Very thick. Very good book. Um, yeah, it's basically like my personal interpretation of that one Owl City song, The Fireflies. I was thinking of the fireflies as these little bits of truth or beauty or like transcendence or like little bits of the logos and universal meaning that are sort of scattered and hidden through things. And sometimes they appear. Sometimes you put them in a jar and you, you save them.